Hey there, Ham Radio homies. I'm Hope, November Delta 2 Lima, and welcome to hamradio.world. Today, we finally finished our new super awesome D Expedition in a Box, and I'm going to show it to you and give you a little peek under the hood. So stay tuned. Before we get started looking at the D Expedition in a Box, here's what I want you to do hit the like button, hit the share button, share to like everyone you know. Then if you're not subscribed, go ahead and push the subscribe button and ding the bell for notifications so that you can know when we upload another video. Now, to get started, this box is a de-expedition in a box. You can take it anywhere in the field. MCOM operations, parks on the air, national parks on the air, um, de-expeditions, vacations, and basically anywhere where you're wanting to operate out in the field. It's a, it's a Pelican 1510 case that it's in, which is IATA approved carry-on size. And it's got wheels so that you can roll it around, and it's got a handle, so it's basically like a suitcase. So it's easily moved around. And it's also only about 34 pounds, so it's easy to carry. The radio is an ICOM IC7100, which is an HF, VHF, UHF radio. And it's mounted to the top panel with a quarter 20 bolt that screws into the bottom of the control head. This is the LDG auto tuner. It's an IT100 auto tuner. And it's, it's strapped on with industrial strength Velcro. And the tuner button on the radio head will actually control, it'll activate this tuner. And it'll correct a 10 to 1 SWR, so it's good for using antennas like the NFED half wave or other non-resonant um, antennas. It's got a plug here for a USB, which you can use to control your radio with a computer, such as um, also digital modes and stuff like that. So that's what this is for. And it plugs in, plugs in right over here. So the cooling system we're using is, there's a fan over here and there's an air intake over here so that once it, if it gets too hot inside then it'll turn on the fan and it'll draw air in and, and push out the hot air so that it won't overheat. The top panel is, um, it's a lovely black color as you can see which matches everything else and it, that's the, it's coating that we have on it which is a really hard coating and if you wanted to get one for yourself, one of these go boxes, you can have the coating in any color you want as long as it's black. Well, actually, when we went to the place to get the coating, they said you could get it in pretty much any color, like purple. We use these nifty manuals, which are basically a small spiral bounded notebook, which is um, a water resistant and it's got instructions on your radio. It's, it's got all kinds of settings and um, filter settings and all that type of stuff that if you're out in the field and you don't remember something about how to program your radio, how to find some menu setting, this will, I'm pretty sure this will have it because it's got a lot of stuff in here. And they're really small so they can just sit on top. So we like to put them in all of our go boxes when we take them out in the field. But I know what you really want to see is on the inside. So let, let me get a screwdriver, I'll, I'll take off the top panel, and then we'll take a peek under the hood. Now that we've cut the hood open, it's time to take a look at what's on the inside. This is the body to the IC7100, and it would, that is an HF uh, 160 through 10 meter and a VHF UHF 6 through 70 centimeters. This, is the, this outside connector is for the VHF UHF antenna and this is the VHF UHF connection to the outside with a barrel connector. This one is the HF connection and we use Messi and Poloni coax. This is their Hyperflex 5 because it's, it's really good coax. The Hyperflex 5 is very flexible, low loss, less weight, and also has very good shielding. The HF connection goes up to the tuner and we put all of our wires through grommets so that they don't have a chance of getting cut by the metal. And also this is the barrel connector to the outside for the HF. 
this this wire over here is for the U USB connection to the computer, which we use it for logging software or if you wanted to do digital modes. And there's a ferret choke down there. You probably can't see it, but that's in that's just to make sure that no RFI can get into the computer. The ground from the radio to the outside is a this is over here. We have it all grounded to the common point and there's a bolt going out so that you can plug it into a ground wire. The connection for the tuner is here. This goes up to another grommet. And then this is the wait, sorry, this one is the wire for the control head which plugs up here up into the control head. This brings us to the power for the radio which takes us to the battery. This is a 30 amp hour BioNO LifePo battery and if you want to get anything that BioNO Power makes then please get in contact with us through the Shack in a Box website because we're BioNO dealers and when you order from us the price is the same but they ship it directly to you and this will help us we get paid for doing that and this will help us to continue to make videos and also provide for all of our family. You can charge it with solar in the field um, using the CN Linko connector, which is the same type connector you'd see in the RV industry and stuff like that for solar. And the charge controller used to be here, but now it's here because we had been using the PowerWorks charge controller, which we've used before and didn't seem to have an RFI problem. But when we were testing this out, it used to connect right here, and it all fit perfectly. But the sound was just unusable because there was so much RFI. We're not sure what made this, um, but we're working with PowerWorks to fix the problem. And for now, we're using this Bioeno charge controller because it's had no RFI, that, and it, it's a really good charge controller. The power from the battery goes to a 25-amp circuit breaker, which then goes to the switch, and that goes all the way back to binding posts, which are on the other side here. Now, why do we use binding posts? We use it in a lot of our go boxes, basically any one where we include a battery. And when you're building a go box, neatly doing all the wires and orderly, it's very important. So with this, you can have it all in the same spot, all the wires can connect, and it helps to keep things, um, it helps to keep things all neat and orderly. You can also use it to power a DC to AC inverter and we also use nylon lock nuts because when you're going out into the field you might drag it over gravel and there's just a lot of vibrating going on so the nylon lock nuts won't loosen and so it allows everything to stay nice and tight. From the binding post it goes to several different places. It goes to the power pole connectors over here which can be used to run other equipment or it can actually be used to charge the battery using the BioNO power charger that comes with the battery but you need to leave the switch on otherwise the power that's coming into it is just going to go to a closed switch or, or an open switch I mean and it's not going to get to the battery and actually charge it. It also charges the um, USB charger and voltmeter and that's switched so that you only need it on when you want it on and we haven't had any RFI with this so far, but if we do find that there's RFI coming with it, then we'll change it to just a voltmeter. It also powers the fan, which is controlled with a temperature switch, which we have right behind the fan on the transceiver, so that since if that's going to be getting hot, then the temperature switch, which is normally open, once it gets above 45 degrees Celsius or 113 degrees Fahrenheit, then it'll close the switch, I'm not really sure how it works, but it'll close the switch and it'll turn on the fan so that it'll start to draw air all the way through to help cool it. We're calling this a de-expedition in a box and we have a business called Shack in a Box where um, we make go boxes and all that. So if you do want us to make you one of these or any of our other go boxes, then we'd be happy to. And you can get in touch with us through our website and the, in the description for the video, it has the Shack in a Box website. So don't forget to do that if you want one. 
But for now, we want to go test this out in the field, so I'm going to put it back together. Then we're going to go get Grace and go out to Tomoka State Park. Ham Radio homies, we're here at Tomoka State Park and we've got the 20 meter fishing pole antenna hooked up to the back of the Go Box using the SO239 barrel connector on the back. We have our solar panel set up and it's plugged into the back of the Go Box with the CN Linko connector, which is the same type solar connector used on RVs and stuff like that. We have the ground rod in the ground and we have the go box all grounded with the bolt and wing nut that's on the back of the go box and we're all set up to make some contact. CQ44 is CQ44. This is Kilo Japan 3 Tango. Kilo Japan 3 Tango calling CQ44 in, Ki in Tomoka State Park. KFF 1923. Kilo Bravo 0, Papa Alpha Tango. Kilo Bravo 0, Papa Alpha Tango. You are 5-9 into Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. Thank you for the 5-5 five, five into Nebraska, 73. I don't think it's here anymore. Here, I'll log it, you call. CQ44 is Q44. This is Kilo Japan 3 Tango. Kilo Japan 3 Tango calling CQ44 in Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. Kilo Charlie 3, Hotel Echo, Quebec. Quebec. Kilo Charlie 3, Hotel Echo, Quebec. Uh, affirmative, affirmative. Uh, Kilo Charlie 3, Hotel Echo, Quebec, Pennsylvania. That, uh, the name is Jeff with a T. And you're, you came in real strong here about uh, 7 and 8. Well, you are a 5-9 into Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. 73, Kilo Japan 3 Tango. This is Q as hell. This is report. CQ44, CQ44, Kilo Japan 3 Tango. Kilo Japan 3 Tango, Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. W3CF, this is Kilo Japan 3 Tango. Uh, you're 59 Florida uh, Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. Uh, okay, what do you need from me? You're, you're, uh, you're 59 here in Palm Coast, over. QSL, technically, I think all we need is the signal report, your call sign, and the state, but we got that done. CQ44, CQ44, Kilo Japan 3 Tango, Kilo Japan 3 Tango, Tomoka State Park, KFF 1923. Well, Grace, I think that's all we're going to make tonight. We did make five contacts. It doesn't technically count as a flora and fauna activation for us, but, you know, they get to keep the park number. Um, it's, it's getting late. The sun's starting to go down, so we should probably take down and go home. I'm hungry too. It's dinner time, isn't it? Yeah. We brought nuts. We got some mixed nuts here. Oh, I'll have some. What? I said bring mixed nuts. Not nuts. Oh. Sorry. Just. Well. That's it for now. We've got to go get something real for dinner. 73. Um, yeah. Like, Don't forget to like, like, subscribe, and ding that bell for notifications. And also share. 73. 73. What?
You said bring nuts. Makes oh, nuts. you make food. <laughs> now what happened? Hey there, all you. Hey, I did it wrong this time. You're me up. <laughs>